Let's say you're a 1950s housewife. You've swept the house from top to bottom, your dinner of tuna casserole is in the oven, and it's only 2 p.m. There's nothing decent on the television. And you had to leave that ladies' book club because your husband says it's a breeding ground for lesbian communists. How are you supposed to pass the time? Well, sign no more, ladies, because now there's Make It With Towels. This comprehensive guide is the solution to all your idle needs. Marvel at the myriad of ways you can turn this useful household object into another, less useful household object. Soon, you'll be so busy crafting, you won't even have time to worry about whether your husband will have you forcibly institutionalized for literally nothing. Make it with towels, because you should probably stop thinking about it. Hello, fellow crafters. Welcome to Home Buddy. Today, I'm going to be making and reviewing four vintage towel crafts to see if they're worth your time and or money. All the crafts come from this promotional booklet from Cannon Mills Incorporated. I'll be giving each craft a rating of 1 to 10 stars according to two categories. One, how easy they are to do, and two, whether the objects created are actually something you'd want and or use inside your home. Again, all of these crafts were designed for the express purpose of selling more towels, so the bar is kind of on the floor here. But hopefully we'll be able to find one or two gems among all the rubbish. Let's go! I'll start with these ballet slippers made from leftover washcloths. Following the instructions, I folded and pinned the two opposing corners of the washcloth inward and sewed a half-inch channel along each fold. After that, I did a bit of origami to create one end of the shoes and sewed the top bit together by hand before doing the same to the other side. This craft really only works if the washcloth you're using is an exact square, so be sure to measure it before you start. I ended up with this kind of boat shape. Using a yarn needle, I threaded a cord through the half-inch channels all along the top of the shoe. The cord could then act as a drawstring holding the top of the slippers closed. I'm going to give this craft 8 stars for makeability and 3 stars for actual usefulness, since they aren't very practical in terms of wearability. They're probably great for sock slides though. Alrighty, let's do this. Next up is this bizarre looking shower hood. I only had enough washcloths to make the slippers, so for the next craft I cut a regular sized towel in half, setting aside the other half for later. I then used a 13 inch washcloth to mark and cut two 13 inch squares from one half of the cut towel. I faced the squares wrong side together and pinned and sewed two adjoining sides, creating the inner part of my hood. I used black sharpie to mark and then cut out two 14 inch squares of clear plastic vinyl that would make up the outer hood. Bare vinyl will actually stick to the foot of your sewing machine when you try to sew with it, so what I like to do is cover the top edge with a thin strip of tissue paper so it will glide under the foot of the machine without any problems. You don't want to use too many pins because every perforation you make in the vinyl is going to weaken it and weaken its ability to hold out water, but you also don't want things sliding around or having to rip out the stitching in the vinyl and restitch it because that's going to make it a whole lot weaker. I'm probably using way more pins than I should be, but I also don't trust myself, so make of that what you will. After sewing, I simply removed the pins and tore away the tissue paper, leaving only the finished stitching. Then I trimmed away the sharpie covered edges and turned the vinyl right side out so I could insert the terry hood inside of it. I folded the excess vinyl edges over the edge of the inner terry hood and pinned and sewed it into place by hand. Now I was supposed to leave both sides of the hem open so I could thread a cord through the gap, but I didn't leave enough room for that, so instead I inserted grommets onto either corner and attached bits of cord to them so that the hood could be tied closed. This craft gets a 5 out of 10 for makeability and a 1 out of 10 for usefulness. This is a cursed object and no one can convince me otherwise. Next up is this beach bag made out of the other half of the cut towel. I began by folding a 5.5 inch square of crinoline in half and rounding the corners until I was left with a circle. While I did try to follow the original pattern's instructions by sewing the crinoline circle to a vinyl square and then attaching the vinyl to the towel, I ended up having so much trouble with the vinyl crinkling and even accidentally tearing that I ended up going back to Joanne's and picked up some modern iron-on vinyl and just sandwiched the crinoline circle between the towel and the vinyl when I was ironing it. I then lined all four sides of the towel with bias tape to hide any raw edges. So the last bit of sewing I need to do before I can actually assemble this 
is I need to make a narrow tuck all around this circle of buckram here. And that's going to basically give it a clear bottom so that when it stands up, the fabric knows which way to fold. Because right now, if I just pull the fabric all up, it has no idea where the bottom's supposed to be. So I am going to do that by hand, I think, because I think I'll have more control and it's a small enough area that it shouldn't take me too long. Once the tuck was finished, I folded each side of the square in half and marked and stitched five and a half inches from the folded edge on all four sides. And please, when you're machine sewing multiple layers of thick fabric, be sure to use a heavy duty needle, since putting this much strain on a standard issued machine needle could lead to it snapping in the middle of your work. After that, the only part left was to attach plastic bone rings to each open corner and thread them through with cable cord. Thread two strands of cable through the opposing loops on either corner, and knot the ends to make a handle. I'm giving this bag a 7 out of 10 for makeability, provided you use stick on vinyl. Regular vinyl gets a 0 0.5. For usefulness, it gets a 3, mostly because I just don't understand what it's even for. Is it a tiny beach bag? An unfinished lunchbox? Let me know in the comments what you think I should do with it, because I'm seriously lost here. Last up is this nifty towel coat or robe if you're feeling technical. I started with two standard sized bath towels. I split the first towel right down the middle and trimmed the fringe off the top of each side. I marked 10 and a quarter inches down along the cut side of the towel and covered the area with bias tape to prevent further unraveling. Then I pinned each of the cut sides of the towel to the finished edges of the other uncut towel, marking and pinning from the lower end of the bias tape to the bottom edge. I left a half inch seam allowance on either side so I could fell the two pieces together so there would be no unfinished edges on the interior of the garment. Once I had one long piece of towel, I once again joined the tops of the towels wrong side together and measured and pinned seven and a half inches from either armhole before sewing the shoulder seams together. Then I folded and pinned the excess fabric outward to become the lapels of the robe and tacked them into place by hand. Last but not least, I tied two yards of cable cord around the waist to make a belt and I was done. I'm gonna give this craft 7 out of 10 stars for makeability because it was pretty straightforward, and 8 out of 10 for usefulness because this is actually something I can see myself using when I'm at the pool. the towel coat scored the highest out of all of the projects, earning a total of 15 out of 20 stars, which isn't a super high rating, but compared to the others is pretty good. But what do you think? Would you consider trying any of these crafts at home? And if you have, did you find them easier or more difficult than the way I described it? Thanks so much for watching, and if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe for even more crafty content. Goodbye! Let's do this.